What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel and this is part two of the Tabs Mixing Workflow. Now in part one, I introduce you what the Tabs acronym stands for, and that's Tracks, Auxiliaries, Buses, and Stereo Out. And I showed you the signal path on how that all lays out and how that structure is built. Now in part two, effects use is a very important part of getting that studio sound and how to properly use effects in the tabs, auxiliaries, buses, and stereo out. But before we get into how tabs works in the effects area, I prepared a chart for you to look at that's just another way to look at this to make it a little bit easier on the eyes to figure out how to organize your session and how I organize it in my auto load. Check this out. Now there are certain rules that I follow that are just general rules. Rules can be broken, but if you adhere to these rules, most of the time you're gonna get the best optimal quality of your mix. And that is where and when to use effects. I have a little chart that I'm gonna share with you on how to do that. Okay, so what you see here is kind of a graphic representation of this tabs mixing workflow. And in the left-hand corner, you see the T for tracks, which are mono or stereo. And you can see there's a bunch of tracks like a regular recording that we would have. Moving on to the A for auxiliaries. Auxiliaries are stereo. They're going to be housing our effects, specifically uh, reverbs and delays. And then we're going to move on to our buses. That's where we're going to collect like kind instruments. Again, that's going to be stereo as well. And then finally, the S for stereo out. And that's represented by uh, channel one and channel two stereo output. Now, if I'm going back to the tracks and I'm looking at my tracks here, uh, you'll notice that the first eight tracks are representative of what you would do to record a drum set. Kick, snare top, snare bottom, tom, 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 overhead left and right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my blend on those tracks, compress the kick, you know, do some things to make that drum set sound good, get my levels blended, and then I am going to take all of those drums and I'm going to assign them to a drum bus. And that way I can take the entire mix of that drum and use the fader to mix it up and down. Then we're going to look at percussion. Perhaps I'm doing a shaker and a tambourine. I have a couple tracks of percussion. And likewise, I'm going to get a different blend on them because those are mostly high end. And so I might compress them differently, EQ them differently, and I will assign those two to a percussion bus. Now, if I'm recording a bass, I might use a direct input, a DI, and a bass amp and get a good blend between those two. I will take those two together and I will assign them to a bass bus. Same with a rhythm guitar. Let's say I have a left and right rhythm guitar and then I have a solo guitar on top of that. I will assign those all to a guitar bus. Let's say I have a couple of keyboards. I'm going to assign those to a key bus. And let's say I have a lead vocal, lead double. That will be assigned to a lead vocal bus. And then finally, let's say I have four background vocals, uh, two left and two right those will be assigned to a background vocal bus. So that is how I'm collecting like kind instruments together. Now let's take a minute to talk about, I know we just kind of went from tracks to bus and we completely ignored the auxiliaries. Auxiliaries are going to be when we want to affect certain tracks. So if I look at my drum kit, I'm not going to affect the kick because I don't want that boominess in the reverb, but I do want to get the snare top and my toms. And so what I will do is I will use sends on my track to send them to an auxiliary drum verb. So I got the snare top and the three toms and why not? I'm going to throw the percussion in that same room. They're all going to be sent to the drum reverb. Now, let's say I want to have a little slap back on my snare. I'm going to use an additional effect send on my track to give me a short delay. That's going to auxiliary two. Now, moving down, I want to affect my guitars. And in general, I'm going to have the same reverb on all my guitars, including the solo. So let's go ahead and send those all three to the guitar verb. But because I'm going to do an 80s hair metal solo, I want to have lots of ping pong delays. So I'll use on track 15 on my solo guitar an additional ping pong send to my ping pong delay. So next up is going to be the vocals. I want to have my own vocal reverb for the lead vocals and I'll assign them to auxiliary five, the vocal reverb. And let's say I want to have a different background reverb slash delay, let's say, on my background vocals. And so I will assign that to that. These tracks that I want to affect are going to be sent 
using a send, we're going to send them to our auxiliaries. Now, all of our effects on our auxiliaries are going to be 100% wet, like it is on a mixing board. Now, you'll notice that I did not address the eighth bus, which is the effects return. And so it's important to note at this point that all of my auxiliary effects are going to be dumped down into an effects return bus. That encompasses pretty much all my routing for my buses, all my routing for my auxiliaries. And then the last part of this equation is all of those buses will be sent to my stereo out. And on your stereo out, it's probably where you're gonna to wanna to have your mastering chain on top of that for the final sauce you wanna put on your mix. So if we're gonna look at everything, it's gonna look like this. Kind of a hodgepodge of a mess. Now what this looks like in Logic is a little bit different than what I showed you. Let me show you. Okay, so what this looks like in Logic, if you look at the tracks first, we got the reds going to, which are the guitars going to the guitar puzzle. We got the pianos, which are blue, going to the piano bus. We've got the drums, which are green, going to the drum bus. And then if we want to affect something, you can see that kind of light blue is being sent from the send on a track and going to our first effects auxiliary. And you can see from the purple, all those auxiliaries are being dumped down to our auxiliary bus. And then the yellow, all of our outputs of our buses are going to the stereo out. And then there you can see on top of that, where it says add mastering here, that's where we're gonna add our mastering chain. See, this gives you a lot more control over your mix what you're doing is you're able to collect things in buses and then instead of mixing on the track level, you're really mixing on the bus level. It's gonna make your mix a lot easier and you're gonna be able to discern things a lot quicker. You're also gonna be able to adjust effects a lot quicker by using those auxiliaries. If you're losing one of your effects, you can just kind of goose that fader up to get more once everything's in the mix. If you have not enough effects in general, you can take your entire effects bus and turn all your effects up it gives you a lot more control of your mix and it gets you kind of where you need to get going a lot quicker and it's gonna sound a lot better. Now, one last thing on this, I want to discuss the effects and the rules for effects. Now, I will say this because I don't want all these comments like, no, you could do that, man, I do that all the time. <laughs> what I'm gonna say is these are general rules that probably nine times out of 10 or eight times out of 10, if you adhere to these rules, things will work out great. Now this is a general rule on which of the tabs, tracks, auxiliaries, buses, and stereos, you should use dynamic effects. So let's take a look. So in generally speaking, you can use compressors, gates, and limiters on tracks, you can use them on buses, you can use them on your stereo out. But since our auxiliaries are generally reserved for delays and reverbs, I would say that you do not compress or gate or limit an auxiliary. That's not what it's designed for. You would never do that on a mixing board. You would never send an effects send from a auxiliary fader on a mixing board to a compressor. It just doesn't make sense. Taking a look at the EQ, same thing applies. Yes, you can obviously EQ tracks, you can EQ buses, and you can, of course, EQ your stereo out. But again, using that same principle with dynamic effects, we wouldn't generally send a track to an EQ using an auxiliary send. No, you'd EQ it right on the channel. Moving to reverb, things switch around a little bit. And I'm gonna say that reverb should pretty much exclusively be used on auxiliaries and not on tracks, not on buses, and not on a stereo out. Are there times you can bend that rule? Of course. And if you're gonna bend that rule, you'd only bend it really on the track level, but for nine times out of 10, you really don't use reverbs like that. You're going to use an auxiliary to reverberate your track. The same really holds true for delays. If you're going to use a delay, likely you're going to use an aux send to send a portion of that signal to your delay and have it return to your aux return. In this case, in logic, it would be a bus effects return. You would generally never delay a bus or a stereo out. There are occasions where you may want to throw a delay on a track. It's not a hard no on the tracks, I should say. I should make a maybe category for tracks. Again, these are general rules. They can be bent, but if you adhere to these rules, you're gonna have a better mix in the end. When we get to modulation effects. This kind of turns it on its ear a bit. You can see really modulation effects, chorus, flangers, phasers, ring modulators, that kind of sort of stuff, you're only gonna use on a track. 
you don't generally use an aux send to a chorus or flanger. You're gonna affect that one track using those. Again, you probably wouldn't use that on a bus and a stereo out. Again, I'm gonna say this rule could be bent, like if you wanna do that cashmere thing where that one moment where that drum fill goes and it's all phase and the whole mix is phase. Sure, you can throw that on your stereo and do some automation so it comes in and comes out, fine. But that is the exception, not the rule. And finally, we have distortion. Same thing applies. When you're using distortion, you're generally distorting or overdriving or bit crushing a track. You're not gonna have an auxiliary send that is a distortion or a bit crush. You're gonna generally do that on the track level. Same with a bus, same with a stereo out. So that is the tabs mixing workflow. Hopefully it is something that you can incorporate into your system and get going on your mix to improve your mix. I'm always constantly looking at new ways to improve my mix. I've been doing this for a long time, but I'm never going to not be the student in this. So if you have comments that could help me along the way, I'd love to hear them. Uh, I'd like to dialogue with you. If you think this is a great idea, give me the thumbs up. And if you think this idea is terrible, please write it down and we can have a dialogue back and forth and tell me why you think it's terrible. Please like this video if you are liking it and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And click the bell icon to get notified when new episodes come around. Until next time, I'm George Gabriel. This is George Gabriel Music.